Welcome to the Learning Jam Club podcast. I'm Amanda, your host, a learning experience designer who's worked with companies like Canva, Shopify, and Netflix. And I'm here to guide you through nurturing a growth mindset, celebrating learning, and unlocking your fullest potential. As a variety is the spice of life enthusiast, join me embracing the diverse paths of designing the lives that we love. Hi, everyone, and hi, lovely Nietzsche. I'm so excited to have this amazing woman here with me today. Her story, her life, and just her energy truly inspires me, and I cannot wait for her to inspire you as well. So, hello, Nietzsche. Hello, hello, hello. So happy to be here. Nervous and excited. <laughs> Yay. We're, we're so happy. I'm so happy that you're here. Um, I would love for you to introduce yourself because today is about you. It is your story. You inspire me and I just want you to have that spotlight. Okay. So please introduce yourself. Cool. Thank you, Amanda, for having me in this podcast. My first time in a podcast. So um, awesome opportunity and I'm excited for you as well in your podcast journey. Uh, my name is Nietzsche. That's Ni. Nee. Your knee and cha cha cha, or uh, Frederick Nietzsche, you know, same pronunciation but less crazy. Um, so uh, that's easier to remember for you. And I have been uh, a product designer for a few years, but I have been um, a branding and advertising designer for um, about eight years before moving on to, to product designers. Um, I am a mom of my two-year-old little tomato. <laughs> Her name is Luna Claire uh, from the song Claire de Lune. And um, what else can I say? I, I love going to the gym and do, doing strength training and also solving problem and listening to crime podcasts and um, reading adventure books. Oh, thanks for sharing that, Nietzsche. Nietzsche is so cool, everyone. Like every time... <laughs> I see Nietzsche in her family. They are absolute fashionistas. Like I cannot tell you how fashionable this family is. And that's another thing that inspires me about this beautiful family that Nietzsche has is her, her husband and her little daughter are just always rocking the coolest things. It is the best. <laughs> Thank you. Thank but, you. um, you know, like one thing that I absolutely loved and when we first met, I didn't know that you were a product designer and that you worked for Intuit because I actually mm -hmm. used um, one of their products, QuickBooks, part of my business. So when you said Intuit, I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> anyway, I digress. But um, I think what I really love to do is just dig a little deeper, um, you know, from your journey, from how you got to where you are as a product designer. We can also tap into, you know, you learning and growing, being a mum, and, you know, shifting that as part of your life. But can you share with me a pivotal moment in your life or career uh, mm. that inspired a significant change or decision? Um, to how that shaped you to who you are today? Yeah, I was thinking on this question, right? And um, there are, I can like share a little bit of personal that actually um, formed the way I am now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> going a bit way back. So I was born in Indonesia and I grew up in Palembang, which is um, southern part of Sumatra where the massive tsunami hit before. Um, and um, when I was young, I, I grew up in a, um, a wealthy family. Um, and I, I think uh, like my dad went and um, shook hands with the president, that, that kind of um, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His success, not my success. <laughs> Um, very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I, I, pre I do appreciate it now, like his ambition and everything. And then uh, growing up, I, there were, in 1998, there was a massive riot in, in Indonesia where, um, you know, they were trying to topple the government. And all, and let's not go into the political stuff. But mm. basically, um, I had to flee the country. And I was fortunate enough to be able to flee to Singapore, which is a nearby country. And so it was pivotal because, like, suddenly you have to adapt to a different environment, different language, 
and um, I was 10. <laughs> so it was a really, yeah, impressionable young age. It was, it was really tough, but you know, it was the best that my parents could do uh, in their mind. Uh, that was me going into safety. Um, and then when I was 13, like, oh, sorry, yeah, 13, um, my parents went through bankruptcy wow. and suddenly I have to go back to Indonesia. So that was another like massive shift. Uh, I was comfortable. I was like thriving there. I was going to go into art, um, which I love, like fine art and all this crazy mm. stuff. Um, but I, it was, it had to be cut short and I, I came back home and then I had to go into a new school and an international school. Um, so I could still practice my English and everything. Um, but yeah, there was again another um, thing that I had to adapt to. Um, and then, yeah, there's, those things are um, quite pivotal for me. Um, I've learned yeah. from that um, to be able to go with the flow, adapt quickly. You know, there are things that are not in your control. Like, so you just have to um, get on with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that uh, doesn't make sense. I, really, I think I'm trying to relate it to work where sometimes in life you, you can't um, – choose where you're at. You just have to make the best of the situation. I think that's the mindset that I got growing up. Yeah. Wow. And that's such a, a difficult position to be in at such a young age for you yeah. to have to shift that mindset so, so early on. And yeah. it must've been so confusing and strange at that time from riding that ultimate high where your family is just at a great you know, place and then yeah. ripped from you. Oh, yeah. And um, I remember you were saying you lived in Singapore too, didn't you? Yeah, I did live yeah. in Singapore for three and a half years. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How was that? Um, It was interesting. I think Singapore is like, uh, you know, equivalent to South Korea, Hong Kong, where it's quite work oriented and um, mm. yeah, maybe less of a work and life balance, but the city is super clean. The train smells like sanitizer. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> We love yeah, and the food train. is amazing. Yeah, yeah, super clean. You get fine if somebody sees you at so much as like <clears throat> having the intention to show you like fine. No, okay, no, fine. I'm just gonna put it in my bag. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, that's that's so so cool. You've been basically traveling around in all sorts of countries and yeah. living in different countries as well. What great experience is that? Yeah, I think uh where I was going with that Singapore story was because I had to adapt as well moving to Australia and um exactly. Sometimes, um, like when I was uh, choosing what I want to do, um, should I just, like go with the story or you like keep going? Oh, keep going. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, let's basically... go on tangents. Oh, like uh, tangents. okay. I was wondering like, if I could go through all these questions. No, nah, okay. go on tangents. <laughs> we want to learn about you, Nietzsche. <laughs> yeah. So what, where I was going with that story was that um, like moving to Australia, even um, I wasn't, I was given the choice. Like, do you want to? Um, do you want to study accounting, wh which the country needed at the time, accountants, mm. um, and be able to stay in that country because you can apply for PR and work as an accountant and then stay here. And then that means your life from then onwards is, is uh, you know, is better because you're living in a first world country or you want to pursue um, a master's in design or something like that. But um, you have to come back to Indonesia because you probably can't get a PR, permanent residency, uh, for those who don't know what that is. <laughs> and um, you have to go back to Indonesia and earn a salary of, like, let's say at that point in time was $300 an, a month. But, like, my life, I, I would never even have dreamt of being an accountant. <laughs> like, Wow. Not... I can't see you as an accountant. It's just, yeah. I cannot, yeah. I can't imagine that. But that's wild. Yeah, that, that is why um, it is a difficult uh, decision to make. But sometimes you have to because uh, you have to think about the long run, you know, um, where you want your future uh, to be. Not just like, I hate to do this now. I hate, I hate, I hate it now. I can't do it. No, like you hate it now. But, you know, in three years, in five years, in 10 years, you know, Luna will thank me because I maybe made that decision to, you know, move across to a, a better country. Yeah, yeah, so I, I did take that accounting. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. I, I got a bachelor's in um, that's uh, 
insane. Yeah, a visual congratulations. Condition. I think any form of formal education, especially tertiary, for you to put yeah. in the hours and the commitment and the time. And you were also thinking about the bigger picture. That's yeah. Wow. You have to think about the bigger picture. I think um, mm. it's interesting because um, I feel like I, I grew a lot of empathy for people who studied something and didn't do well. Because I know <laughs> when I was studying design, um, I was like, oh, my God, this is so fun. Oh, my God, I belong here. I, I was like thriving. I love it. I love every assignment. Actually, like as soon as I got the assignment, I came home and I just started doing it. And then uh, back then, like my uh, my friends would like, Micha, can we come over to your because I was living in this um, uh, like what do you call that in English? I think um, like a lodgement, a lo lodging for students or university oh, okay. students. Yep, 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 yep. And um, so it was like just across the university and they were like, oh, can we come over? Because we know that you've already started that. <laughs> so, oh, wow. <laughs> still in two weeks, but they'll come over like at the end of the first week and then just see what I'm doing and then they do it and they tend to get good marks if they do that. And then, yeah, so I would... So basically probably... people were just copying you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Inspired, maybe. And then, Inspired. Um, and I would just help them like the second week I would be helping them. Mm. Yeah, but because I already finished the first week and it was so fun. But when I was studying accounting, goodness me, like I had to Google what is on Google, like what is asset, what is liability. I love and that. Then, I and love then I would that. be sitting because um, this is uh, when I'm already in Australia um, uh -huh. with my brother. And I'll be sitting and he went to work and I already sat in, in on, on the you know table like studying accounting. Yeah whatever subject that was and he would go to work and he came back I was still on that table like studying but still like wow with, I studied like three times harder than when I was doing design and um it's funny isn't it I, when you find something that you actually like, like yeah it's insane mm -hmm. and I just had like you know I just passed like credit average but design credit I average yeah, but, girl so, that's great that's but like was, but like I guess I wanted to be better i wanted to be like yeah you know, distinction or high distinction or thing like that but yeah wow i just for the life of me i don't have the interest i i just like spend three three times the amount of effort but whereas design um like thankfully i, I didn't realize until i went to the podium that uh, i topped the the year oh yeah best um what do you call that best best in class is it yeah yes so girl now when i see people who don't do well in school or in mm. university i'm like it's not because you're not smart or you're not, yeah. you don't put enough effort, but your interest lies somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can relate to this so much. I'm going to share something that I haven't told a lot of people. <laughs> so I studied a bachelor of commerce and there are mandatory <laughs> units that you have to complete in order for you to get your bachelor of commerce here in uh, Australia. Mm -hmm. And one of the units was accounting. <laughs> so there was some weird thing in my mind that I thought that I wanted to be an accountant as well. Cause again, it's safe. So, you know, perception from our families and, and whatnot, but I actually failed accounting twice. <laughs> oh, I had no. to do it again. So everyone, I'm going to let you know, I scored 23 out of 100. <laughs> yep. For yeah, my yeah. first semester of university. <laughs> and I thought <laughs> I was an absolute failure. And how could I get accounting 101? Accounting 101. How did I get that so wrong? <laughs> but I'm letting you know, I failed twice. And the third time I passed and I got 56 out of 100. Ah, good job. Good job. <laughs> so yeah, P's get degrees. <laughs> so you know what? That shows me how much grit you have. A lot of people would have like quit and go like... Oh yeah, to me. like exit. Mm -mm -mm. But you like you know what? I know this is not for me. I'm gonna do it again. I failed. That's fine. I'll fail. Oh. I failed better. But I want to make sure that I pass this. And then you know, like that shows me a lot of grit. I hated it. Like Nietzsche, you know, I, I don't know if you you've seen that meme. I'm gonna find it. But when like you're looking at the board and there's just these weird math <laughs> equations floating around, that's what I saw when I looked at accounting. But with accounting, it was a paragraph of words, and you had to find the formula. And I'm like, I can't read i can't read <laughs> i understand totally understand totally understand where you're from yeah oh, oh well you know what accounting homies accounting homies right there i love that that is so funny oh uh, you know i get you have shared so much insight and vulnerability i would love to ask you 
looking back at your whole journey in your life, what is one piece of advice you would give to your younger self? Yeah, um, I was thinking on this. So there's a few things that I, I could say to my younger self, but I think um, you have the power to like go into a room, look at the vibe. Mm. It's not for you. You can leave. Um, yeah, the adverse thing that happened uh, from that situation of like, oh, you know, this is out of my control. I need to move to Singapore. I move back to Indonesia and then I have to choose accounting. Sometimes I also felt like it makes me feel like, oh, maybe I don't have a say in this. Maybe I just need to go through with it. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, um, growing up, growing older, um, I keep reminding myself and I think I've now like sort of absorbed it a bit more <laughs> as an adult that I am worthy. I'm worthy of what I wanted to do. I'm worthy of my dreams. I'm worthy of like where I want to get to. It may take a bit of time, but if that place is not, you know, worthy of my efforts and, and my dedication and my time, I can choose to leave at any point in time. Yeah. Like I don't have to. Yeah. Cause sometimes like I, I used to, people used to tell me, you know, at least do two years, at least do one year, you know, it's not, it's going to look bad in your resume and all that stuff. I know, but back then you're like, oh, oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? No, go, go find somewhere else. Chances are, if that is so bad, the next place might be better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Absolutely mm. music to my ears. It's that worthiness. It's that, you know, that deep self acknowledgement that you are worthy, that you can do things, that you have that drive and that grit yeah. that you were talking about, right? Yeah. I think. And it's how you see failures and what the society yeah. perceives that failures like stuff that like fuck what the society thinks um but it's more around every failure that i see i see it as an opportunity i see it as a learning moment i see it as mm-hmm. okay if this happens right now i could do something better in the next time and yeah. also you're right in terms of you know career and staying there longer or not i don't believe tenure equating to the value that you provide to the no. organization there are, I've seen people who have been in their roles for eight years, five years, but they're not delivering the quality of work that mm-hmm. someone who has just started, mm-hmm. who, you know, can deliver value. They might be providing more value than that person. Yeah. So it truly does not matter the tenure that you've been in your role for. It's what the value and the impact that you can provide. Yeah. Not from yourself, but to the organization, the teams. hundred mm. percent. And I think in the past, maybe still now, some people think that, you know, uh, you got to like, yeah, like tenure and seniority, you know, like that kind of like you got to work yourself up. And there's that thing of like, you got to work yourself up, but you know, you can be an individual contributor. 100%. Know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of mindset that maybe has to change or is changing hopefully. Yeah, mm. for sure. I mm. love that. I love that. Um. All right, we're gonna we're gonna switch gears, and I'm gonna go into you know. Uh, let's see what we can go into. In moments of doubt or difficulty, what strategies do you use to stay motivated and focused on your goals? Ah, uh, that's really good. Um, I think you know, this is a hack that I use. Yes, we love some hacks. Go go go. <laughs> so um, my password. I'm not going to tell you what my password is. <laughs> but password? No. Okay, Nietzsche, everyone, get ready. We're going to hack her whole life. <laughs> Literally. Her oh, bank account, her credit cards, <laughs> financial statements. No, I'm kidding. Go on. But there's something you can do with your password and words of affirmation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I haven't sold. I pay this app. I can't pay for it, but I think it's worth it. It's just pretty much a widget on my phone that uh you know like a rolodex of um is it called i am one second wait because girl i have it too <laughs> wait, wait wait let me just and like check. oh wait everyone can see my phone I, I don't care but like this widget down here yeah yes i'm oh yes! my goodness <laughs> yes girl we yes! are affirmation queens <laughs> yes i love that you know it's not that cheap it's not like one dollar two dollar i can't remember how much it was but it's like 20 or 30 bucks yeah but then you pay once but i think it's really worth it 
And oh I'm wait, like, or, maybe, or maybe it was eighty dollars. I forgot, but I was like, I need this in my life. Okay, both of us shouldn't be an accountant because we don't even know how much. Uh, we we girl math. It's fine. Girl math every day. <laughs> girl math for sure. Um, yeah. So um, I mix the password with that word of affirmation. Let's say I don't know. Um, the word of affirmation is uh, like worthy worthiness. So I put like some form of that word or a short sentence and put that as my password because I need to log it into my computer every single day. Mm -hmm. I need to, you know, when I go shopping or whatever, I need to log into that password, like a version, different versions of it. And every time I do that, I remind myself of that affirmation and it has really worked wonders for me. Yeah. So that is a brilliant hack and a brilliant way to recondition your mind. Like that is... Yeah, but with with the app, it's awesome. But you have to look at the phone, and then you know maybe True. you're busy doing something. But with a password, you have to remember. You have to keep like typing it out. So. Wow, everyone, you heard it from Nietzsche first, okay? She's going to lead this movement where we change our passwords to our own affirmations and intentions. Oh, I hope there are no hackers in this. Brilliant. Well, look, there's there's million variations of affirmations, right? So it's something that's bespoke to you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. I love that. That is a fantastic strategy. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Um, apart from that, uh, like, I think in the past, I have been uh, made redundant before um, right. when I was in, working in branding. And um, I guess it's coming from experience. Then only I could tell myself this advice um, or, or hack or, um, yeah. Um, I was made redundant. The company wasn't doing well. It was in the red for a few months. And I was um, like the first full person to be made redundant. I wasn't happy then. And everybody knew in that company that I wasn't happy because I wanted to do more UX. I wanted to do something that's based on research. I want to, you know, talk to the, you know, the client that was briefing us. But mm-hmm. my role is really limited to this cubicle of, you know, designing this branding and then based on this word of, I'm going to pick a word, belonging, belonging, like this, mm. the synthesis just comes down to the word belonging and it's based on a circle. So I've done, you know, branding three times based on circle, belonging. And like, I, I was telling my colleague back then, my friends now, I swear to you, if I do another branding based on a circle or like belonging <laughs> or I'm like, I'm just, I just can't. Cause like, it was like, I think three or four, three maybe brands in a row that was based yeah. on the same thing. And like, and every single time you do each, like three different versions and they choose one. So like three or three or three. And then, oh my gosh, for your yeah. next birthday card, I'm going to put a circle and I'm going to put belonging. <laughs> <laughs> you belong. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I was, I wasn't happy. I was, and, and then makes sense that I was made redundant and I was, I took it so hard on myself. Like it's mm. me, every, even though these are, it's not because of you. It's just, you know, I think I'm sure there's some, some form of that, but <laughs> anyway, yeah. I took it so hard, I cried, it, like your sense of self, like just your sense of, um, worthiness, just gone. It's obliv, 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 Anyway, that word. Keep going. I have no idea what you're going to say, but anyway. <laughs> I was trying to be smart, but then I couldn't pronounce the word. Um, yeah, so it's gone. You and- are smart, to be silly. <laughs> and it's okay. English is our second language, so it's fine. We'll no, figure it no, out. Very true. But I don't know what it's called in Indonesian or Mandarin. Anyway. You know what? Say it in Indonesian and say in Mandarin and we'll figure out a word. Yeah, yeah. And nobody knows what it means anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's gone. And, you know, I have to build myself back up, like meet with people who know me to reaffirm that, no, you're worthy, you know who you are, you know, you've mm. done good things here and there. And it's... But now when I'm looking back at it, that was the point, the kick in the butt that I needed because I have mm. been thinking of doing UX for like two years at that point in time. I, I took like a general assembly course, like the yes. one day course. Um, and then um, I was like, oh man, I could really get into this, but I didn't want to make the leap to do like the three month proper course right. and then that wasn't a kick in the back that I needed like this is the time if there is any time that um I can study it's now yeah. so now looking back at it uh one closed door although it seems like it's an amazing door at that point in time mm. but like every job after that was better than the last yes yeah and I'm like girl why were you like what were you thinking why did you stay when you were unhappy 
so oh, I know it but, sounds so cliche like door yeah open, but nothing. but you know I think there's cliche Shay sayings like that but there's also moments of people actually taking courageous action to mm-hmm. do the thing to mm-hmm. leave their job to go find another job to accept another role and mm-hmm. leave their comfort zone like yeah people are so comfortable in sitting with their thoughts sitting in that you know space of oh you know it's paying the bills it's fine I can put up with it but you're literally eating yourself away every single day by putting yourself in a position or in a space where it's not serving you you know and imagine ripping that band-aid off and just taking a leap being courageous you will open up so many new opportunities for yourself and you've proven that Nietzsche like your career your life and Oh, everything, you know? Yeah. So well done, you. Mm. Yeah. So Perfect. good. Um, let's see. Oh, I have I have more questions. Are you ready? <laughs> Born ready. <laughs> All right. What are three actionable steps someone can take to start making a significant change in their life or career? If you I mean- were to give three steps, three actions three pieces of advice to someone who wants to start and make a change in their life what would you give them Mm. three yeah i always ask people this question whenever i um interview no like talk to more senior leadership team especially women like i admire women who are strong and have a sense of leadership and um oh man i do need this advice too but what i can give at this point in time in my life Mm. is um Everybody first is everybody knows something that you don't, Mm -hmm. um, be it the, you know, um, be the, some, someone you overlook, like, um, the receptionist at the office, let's say, you know, Mm -hmm. she knows about scheduling and time management and picking up call and, you know, talking to different people in a, in a, in a good manner, professional manner, better than you do. Um, be it, um, I don't know. Maybe uh, uh, I want to clap to all the receptionists out there. Like they are the face and the branding of organizations. They truly are. They filter through and they just get shit done. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for sure, hundred percent. And like so half, half the time, I'm like, "You're so put together, girl." Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. all yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just so happens that into it, um, it's a girl and a guy as well. Um, mm. And then you know. Um, yeah, you, there's a million of examples. I'm just struggling to say something because I don't want to offend anyone listening. No, you be your authentic self. We yeah, welcome yeah. you all. Oh, maybe like a Uber driver or like a delivery driver, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I just take a passion. But you know, he can bike better than I do. He knows routes better than I do. He knows about time management and efficiency and then just like knowing which location to go first. And there's a lot of strategy that goes into that that you don't. So just mm. respect everybody. Everybody knows something that you don't. You can learn something from everybody um that's one with that attitude i think it's good to go through a life that way than Mm -hmm. thinking that you're the smartest person in the room you know what they say like if you're the smartest and you're in the wrong room um secondly i think uh surround yourself with people who are like you positive and good vibes people who can empower you encourage you and see the good in you is really important because you know, sometimes it takes just one toxic person, but oh, sometimes you have no choice, but half that toxic person. So you have to balance it out with like, <laughs> where there's light, there's dark, but you know, what? it's where you want to pivot on that, that scale, right? Yeah. Definitely in the light. In the light yeah. <laughs> you're so in the donut light. <laughs> <where you're pointing. laughs> um, yeah. So balance that, um, you know, the toxicness in your life that you have no choice sometimes with a lot of light, as much light as possible. Even if you don't know that person, if that person seems out of reach, just, put a bit of effort to connect with that person. Yeah. It's I definitely agree. going to um, set a tone to your life. Um, third one is, um, I think what I'm not afraid of is hard work. What I'm afraid of is not having the passion. Yeah. So, yeah. So don't be afraid of hard work. Be afraid of not having a passion. And if you can't find, like, the advice is probably just find your passion and, like, lean towards it. Yeah. Um, but make sure it makes money too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That would 
I love that. No, thank you so much for sharing those three lovely, lovely, actionable steps, Nietzsche. Mm-hmm. And I, I know, and I know, no, no, deep down, it would truly inspire someone to take those courageous actions to just move forward to be mm. more happy, more positive with their life and with themselves, if anything, just happiness comes from within and then you radiate that out. Yeah, just choose to see um, half glass full if you can. Well, we'll probably wrap up with one last question. Mm-hmm. What is one goal or project you're passionate about right now and how are you taking steps to achieve it? Mm, I'm going to have to think on this one. Your, uh, your exercise. Oh, exercise? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it's about work. Um, I had share one. It's about work. Yeah. About work on. One about um, the other one, yeah. So uh, about work, um, I'm trying to, without saying too much, maybe there is an NDA that I've signed. I'm not sure. <laughs> but okay. Anyway, keep um, it light touch if yeah, there's an NDA girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Never read those NDAs, but I'm sure you know. No, don't say that. You <laughs> Nietzsche reads the NDAs. She reads it thoroughly and she signs it with confidence. Yes, I have a special highlighter that I highlight. Yep. Um, yep. Basically, <laughs> You're right. uh, I found like um, there is. Uh, we found from research, like um, from account from accountants. Uh, I'm working with accountants. My client are accountants at the moment at QuickBooks. Mm. And um, they um, they need a reviewer and prepare a dynamic. So I found like a, a gold nugget there where I can dig deeper into. What I'm doing that. now is designing a research that goes really deep into that dynamic and try to create the light and efficiency in that dynamic. So I'm excited by what I can find, yeah. what I can uncover with yeah. like, observations. Um, apart from, and also learning from researchers in my company yes um, yeah so people that enjoy it are so talented and i'm just like oh, i can only imagine I give me only imagine. Goodness and knowledge <laughs> um in life i am working towards a way to chin up so before i had luna um i was able to do two chin ups with five kilo weights damn girl yeah, yeah. wow um, but I've wow. gained that five kilo internally now. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's, it's happy weight, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, ever since I, I had Luna, it's, um, you know, if anybody who's had, who's, who's had C, uh, C-section would attest to this maybe, um, mm-hmm. that you feel like your body's going to rip into two when you do chin up. So getting over that mental barrier, I've gone over that. And then now I'm in a place where I can work myself up again to maybe a five kilo um, chin up again. So that really wow. motivates me to go back there. <laughs> so incredible. You are a mum. You are a designer. You are a problem solver. You are just jacks of all trade. I love that. And I appreciate you. And I just truly want to say thank you so much for taking the time today to share your story and I hope that it inspires others listening to your story because I believe everyone has a story in the way and how they got to a place where they are today. Mm -hmm. There's been so many, you know, turbulence and little waves and and corners that they had to take and jumps and leaps. So I appreciate you. I applaud you and I celebrate (laughs) you. So thank you, Nietzsche. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate you. I applaud you and thank you for this opportunity. Um, and I love hanging out with you all the time. You have amazing vibe. Like we think differently, but we vibe really well. Oh, so good. Um, and um, good luck on this podcast. You've got Thank a thing you. going on. You've got it. You've got a girl. Yeah. Just go get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I'm not paying her to say all of this. <laughs> she does. Maybe I signed an NDA. You don't know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> all right. No, thank you so much.